We live in a time of overinformation, where more depressing news is right at our fingertips all the time, more fear-mongering media than we can count, hopeful positive stories seem close to non-existent. Does that mean the world is all bad and nothing good is happening or significant? No, but fear sells. Fear sells very well and keeps your attention much easier than the feel-good stories. If I can make you afraid and offer you some form of comfort in terms of a product or a service that I can offer, well, I will likely have and keep your attention and probably make some money, as that's actually what we seem to be taught in marketing. In exploring humanity, we find that as human beings, we are susceptible to fear and that we must face it. So what is fear? How does it control us? And how can we protect ourselves? This is what we're gonna be exploring. Fear itself is a primal reaction to danger. So say if you're afraid of presenting a speech in front of a large audience, you would react the same way as you would react if there were a fire in your house right next to you. Fear is fear. No matter how big, how small, it can be catastrophic to our lives. Controlling everything that we do when you try to ignore it, it becomes more and more present, up until the point where you end up treating it like a spider in the corner of a room. But don't be fooled, it is still there, still watching to see if you have the capacity to face it. If not, it will approach you and take over your mind. Large industries, corporations, and politicians, to name a few, use fear in a similar way. They understand our weakness and exploit it by targeting those that we love and our uncertainty of the future, which is why we must be capable of defending ourselves. But security is only external. It must be internal too. We must make ourselves feel that security from within. Fear-mongering, of course, is nothing new. Historically and present, some institutions will use the idea of hell or, and retributions to keep their followers in line. The concept of space in heaven is limited to X, Y, Z, but hell is open to the masses. Honestly, as a marketing student, that sounds like a marketing health scam. Being skinny is the only way to be healthy, but not many people can be this body shape, yet that won't stop us from shaming you and reminding you that you are not good enough looking for society unless you follow XYZ regime and hope for your salvation and give us more of your money, please. Of course this works because we're hardwired to pay attention to things that might cause us more harm than good. I mean, historically. If there was a rainbow over a stream and you were walked towards it without noticing the lion, your survival rates would be very close, like very from zero to very highly improbable. The dreamers were dead. These days, it's different. Many of us are not in immediate danger when our fear is triggered. Instead, we might be late to a meeting or have to, or have to meet someone new, or we're doom scrolling on our phones learning about how pe people disagree, who disagree with us are bad. For sure, they are the worst people there. They are the mortal enemy, but reality is different. Fear keeps us from having important conversations with people who we think are too different to possibly understand us. It's easy to believe that all conservative people hate transgender people and want to fully outlaw abortions, but many people aren't actually hardliners. I remember learning that in 
a study conducted in the US, 67% of people were in favor of abortions being legal, at least in certain circumstances. And how people feel about being trans or otherwise can actually just shift by interacting with these people. And that have been traditionally and still are demonized. Yes, it's just, it, yes, it's easy to get stuck in these politics, especially the ones that are south to our border. And what I find is so fascinating is what happens when there are honest debates and conversations and those are allowed to happen. When people can discover their common humanity through talking about their fears like job security, compensation, retirement, health care, and access to more affordable housing, many people are united. They've just been told to blame the others for their problems instead of the ultra-rich companies who have been, I don't know, paying uh, all the politicians in our world a bunch of money to get their way. <laughs> so, <laughs> we are talked to blaming the government policies driven by this corporate desire instead of human health. We are always the ones who end up suffering. And of course, this is no, nothing new to many of us. We inherently know this at this point in time. My favorite iteration of this that still happens is the union blaming for job and wage suppression. <laughs> when unions are offer the greatest uh, the greatest support and chances for wage increase and have been historically the ones who have led to anyone having rights. And because they unite the workers and they give them a collective voice against the corporate offices. Or a few months ago here in Canada, when there was a huge uproar about a possible capitals, capital gains tax that could really help out the economy and potentially help our health care system that would only affect, I don't know, 4% of people who have the money. And there was all this fear going after people, telling them, oh no, we can't do this, it will hurt us so much. And I won't go too far down this rabbit hole because there are all sorts of arguments, but I do also know that many of us complain about, I don't know, public services lacking, the really, really long wait times for hospital beds, and the roads that are still falling apart despite every single year us repaving them. And taxes are the way that the governments get money. <laughs> and most people will never win that 4% lottery, but will need the government's help. And all of this just makes me really sad. Sad that these conversations don't happen much anymore. Saddened by how fear has just driven our societies apart. Now, we can help ourselves, protect ourselves on a mental level by accepting the world as it is and really by respecting others because in respecting others, we don't give all of our will power to our fear. But it is primal that it is necessary that we dig deeper, that we ask ourselves, what am I actually afraid of? Is my fear rational? Am I afraid because of a lack of knowledge on my part? If the answer is yes to the last question, communicate your fears and do some research to under, better understand what you're really facing. I mean, none of us know everything despite the access we have to instant information. We are not all a bunch of experts and nobody is an expert in anything. Our fear is really only as strong as we allow it to become. And in the same way that our psychology can be hacked to get us to fear something and want something else, we can hack our own psycho psychological state and promote health and healing. We can think and be healthier in this world. You know, positivity is contagious. And we all struggle with fear. I mean, 
I have lived my life mostly with chronic anxiety and a deep-seated fear of abandonment. It compels me to make dumb choices, stay in previously very unhealthy relationships, and really not to speak up for myself and know how to use the word, no, I don't want to get you another bag of chips, go get those yourself. It's very hard to challenge these fears without someone else to support you and who can also understand those fears because they themselves live with them. I was lucky enough three years ago to find a partner who could empathize with me and sharing our fears and insecurities made them something we could laugh at collectively and really use to work through and work past certain fears that don't always make sense. Laughter, honestly, I believe, is one of the greatest weapons we have against fear. Finding ways to break apart our fear and building up our confidence. I uh, often think of that Harry Potter spell, ridiculous, when the characters are confronted with an illusion of their deepest fears are asked to reimagine it as something funny, something manageable that they can control. Laughter breaks the illusion of control that fear has on many people. And unity to support from others can help us crush our fears, challenge them, and put them to the test of life. Of course, now, fear is still important, as are all emotions. There is no bad emotions or anything. Sometimes fear really does make sense. If there is a fire, you should run. If someone is chasing you with a knife, again, you should run. Sometimes fear makes sense, just not as often as it gets triggered within us. Imagine if we were all able to open up and talk about our fears to one another, to complete strangers and take comfort in the unity that we all have fears, rational and irrational. Imagine if we could all support one another in working beyond our fears to a place of acceptance and letting go. Imagine how much our eyes would open as we looked out into the world, shedding the shame of fear and seeing the puppeteers for the first time, and what we could do together to combat fear tactics and build a more healthy, equitable society, where we don't blame our neighbors for our wage suppression and lack of housing, but Look at the politics, the policies that built a society that intended to make only a few people wealthy and leave the majority of people underserved and without opportunities to grow to their own potential. Or demonize without, or demonize the people on EI and disability for needing government funds in a capitalist society that honestly depends on a percentage of people never being housed or never be able to find jobs. It is part of the system that was built. So we can't keep on getting angry with other people for problems that have come to us over the years by corporations and places getting more and more power with time. When we begin to rediscover that humanity, to find long-term solutions for many people just fighting to live another day. And we start to work on building a better world for everyone. Fear is just as big or as small as we allow it to be. Though fear is a manifestation of control and a primal reaction of anxiety, if we learn to extend ourselves some self-compassion and we learn to extend that outwards by giving others a chance to speak and seeing everyone as another human, we can learn to start to see fear as something else. We can learn how to start to not only befriend others, but we can befriend our own fear as we start to respect it as a part of where we are and understand that 
it is not everything as part of we are who we are just as our social media is not who we are just as there's no little just defining factor of you you are all of your emotions all of your deepest fears anxieties the greatest moments of your life it is everything and the harder we can work to get to those places the better we are off as people as Marianne Williamson said, as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. This quote for me touches on a profound truth of what it means to be human and how we can go forward in our lives in better ways. So today, after this service, as we continue to do coffee and stuff, I invite everyone here, maybe open up a bit Test the waters, see if other people might be struggling with the same anxieties and fears as you, and learn. Be open to learning from each other, and see if you can help yourself move beyond some beyond fears that have been ingrained and taking over in your own mind. Let others in, and let the light shine out. Thanks.